Good evening, Facebook friends, revolutionaries, citizens of America and the planet. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening, and, Facebook friends. Uh, we have a very special guest tonight. Well, in fact, I, I think you could say we're doing this jointly tonight. We're both guests. Uh, I am really honored to be here with Ajamu Baraka, my running mate in this past election that I was so very honored and um, lifted up and enlightened by in the course of this, uh, of this run. And uh, we're going to take a few minutes to just share with you our reflections as we emerge from this very exciting uh, year of struggle and triumph and as we look ahead to uh, what's to come. So we'll get right down to it. We'll speak for a few minutes, save up your questions and your comments, and we want to hear from you and have this discussion with you tonight as we close out this very exciting, eventful year. So take it away, Ajamu. Um, it was really just such an honor to be with you for uh, for this campaign and really excited about where we're going from here. So what's it looking like well, from your perspective? Well, thank you so much, Joe. I mean, it's really, I'm the one that's really honored to be here with you again. It's been uh, it's been a couple of months, uh, but, uh, and I, I miss being around you. And so I'm glad to have a chance to at least connect up on, on, on Skype. Um, you know, this has been a, uh, a real adventure for me, and I really uh, thank you for um, having the trust in me to uh, to bring me along on this adventure. Uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot watching you, uh, seeing how hard you work and your commitment to uh, the, to this ticket and to the party and really to uh, uh, to serving the people. And it was um, an inspiration. Uh, and I, I want to thank you again for of uh, being who you are uh, and the kind of work that you've done uh, for the people of this country. So, you know, this, um, you know, for me, it was uh, a very intense experience. Uh, as I said, I learned a lot, um, had a chance to move across this country uh, representing uh, you, the party out there uh, and the people um, in a year that was really a historic year because this was a year in which you know, there were there were great possibilities for a real breakthrough for a third party challenge. And we we felt the momentum. We felt the potential there. Um, but we saw that we were up against some uh, very powerful forces that also understood that this was a, uh, a a momentous year for a possible third party challenge. And we had to face a machine that was absolutely committed to trying to undermine our campaign uh, to basically undermine the, mo the, the morality of our campaign, uh, the politics that we were trying to advance, uh, all for the sole purpose of trying to advance themselves, uh, regardless of what kind of consequence they may have for the people uh, and for the nation. And so we saw the uh, tremendous fear mongering that took place across this country. Um, fair migraine that uh, uh, was fairly successful in terms of many people who felt uh, uh, connected to our campaign, who uh, correctly understood that we had the, uh, the values and the principles to take this country forward in a very progressive and revolutionary direct, uh, direction, you know, but yet they, they just couldn't in the end, you know, sort of pull the trigger and go all the way. And so we don't condemn them, you know. We we understand how effective this uh, fear mongering was. But we we one of the lessons that I learned, you know, was that there is a tremendous amount of, of potential, uh, and that if we are able to get across or get past uh, that fear factor, uh, this Green Party and the third party challenge uh, has the real possibility of making historic change uh, here in this country. So, um, you know, one of the things that uh, we, we're going to learn and we've learned uh, is that we have to be consistent, uh, that we have to uh, stay connected to our principles, um, and that if we do that, uh, we are eventually going to be successful. You know, moving across this country and getting a chance to see up close and personal 
the kinds of conditions that people are facing. Um, it, it really impressed on me the, uh, the importance of us presenting to the American people real, a real choice. Uh, we knew that uh, if we didn't win, that regardless of who won the election, uh, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, that the neoliberal crisis for, for most of us uh, was going to continue. That's why we said in our campaign that, you know, no matter what happened on November the 8th, we were committed to a uh, continuous struggle. We recognized that our responsibility was to, in fact, build a movement, uh, that uh, this campaign was a very effective uh, weapon, in fact, doing that, uh, and that uh, the work did not stop on November the 8th. So we learned a lot, and we will talk some more about uh, uh, lessons learned here uh, during this, uh, this uh, conversation. But uh, again, you know, what I saw, Jill, uh, was the tremendous potential uh, that this campaign had and that the Green Party has uh, for the future. I couldn't agree with you more, and well said, Ajamu, as usual. Um, I think this campaign was really just a taste of the struggle to come and the, um, of the triumph to come. And even, you know, in spite of the media blackout, in spite of more money than ever pouring into the presidential campaigns, in spite of a media that was more uh, in some ways, more locked down, gave away, you know, um, billions of dollars uh, worth of free media to Hillary Clinton and to Donald Trump, in spite of more uh, games and deception, um, you know, or who knows if it's more, but, uh, you know, just uh, unconscionable deception going on, some of which was revealed in the uh, in the leaks of the DNC, the Democratic National Committee emails that showed, for example, how uh, Donald Trump, along with uh, Ted Cruz and Ben Carson, were part of the strategy of the Democratic Party. That was part of their strategy to lift them up, to make uh, Hillary Clinton seem more electable. The strategy to um, uh, to basically smear Bernie Sanders and to tilt the playing field against him. You know, we saw so much corruption in this election. 80% uh, of the American people said they were disgusted by this election. 76% um, of people were saying they wanted to know who their other choices were. And most people, uh, about 72% polls said, did not know about us. So, you know, and, and almost half of people stayed home and voted with their feet. The people who did vote were largely voting against their fear, uh, against the candidate they most disliked instead of what they were for. In spite of all of that, we still tripled our vote uh, over the uh, prior election and even more over the election prior to that. Uh, we wound up with more um, Green Party uh, on the ballot in more states than ever before. And uh, we have more Green Party chapters uh, than we've had in, certainly in recent memory. So uh, the wind is at our back, and I think we've been proven right over and over that we need a new politics that's of, by, and for the people. We need to put people, planet, and peace over profit. In many ways, Donald Trump is the expression of uh, neoliberalism coming home to roost, both in terms of the policies of Bill Clinton supported by Hillary, the deregulation of Wall Street, et cetera, the uh, offshoring of our jobs, the, um, you know, the, the uh, growing concentration of wealth in the hands of very few. Um, in many ways, you know, Donald Trump is the next extension of neoliberalism, um, or as um, Cornell West said, neo-fascism. You know, uh, this election was a choice between neo-fascism and neoliberalism. They are two, they're basically joined at the hip. And so many people are now saying we need something else. And the Green Party is that something else. And it was really an honor to be lifting up with you what is really, I think, the agenda for the future. That is the agenda of struggle in our frontline communities, our connections from uh, Standing Rock to the homeless in Philadelphia, where you slept out um, uh, uh, with the homeless community, the um, 
uh, the uh, the public housing that we went and rallied with, also in Philadelphia, um, the uh, Baton Rouge communities, the Black Lives Matter, the fight um, against police violence, supporting these the Frisco Five, who actually succeeded in moving out their uh, their police chief who had overseen so many uh, disastrous uh, murders of African-American young men. Uh, there were just very exciting things. Um, let's see, hold on one second. I'm just dealing with a, uh, a little technical glitch there. So there were so many big steps that we took going forward. And I think this is where we are now. I want to just mention briefly, uh, save the date for the 20th of January, where we will be part of Occupy the inauguration to stand up for the kind of democracy that we need going forward and to say we do not consent, uh, not my president. We deserve a very different uh, vision of the future. Plan to come with us uh, to Washington, D.C. if you can. And if you can't, um, uh, tune in. On the 21st, we will be holding a uh, Facebook Live session with the frontline communities leading the way forward. So with that, I want to open up with some of the questions that you've been sending in. And let me encourage you to like this conversation, to share it, and to send us your questions. Um, so Gretchen Crawford in Maine says, the best thing about this horrible election season was being able to vote for you both here in Maine. Thank you, Gretchen. Uh, let's see, the next one, the next question from Tammy Dugan. What do you think of the bill Obama signed making alternative media illegal? Okay, I'm not familiar with that bill. Does that ring a bell to you, uh, Ajamu? Or do you wanna comment on the broader issue of alternative media and where we stand? Well, I think that she may be referring to uh, the National Defense Authorization Act that was signed on Friday by uh, President Obama. Uh, and deep in that, uh, in that, uh, in that bill, uh, a provision uh, that was um, advanced uh, by a Republican senator, uh, Rob Portman. Um, it was a piece of legislation uh, that uh, he called the uh, Countering Information Warfare Act, which was which was an act that uh, a, a bill that uh, it, it provides or uh, charges the State Department with developing a interagency uh, task force uh, to counter so-called foreign propaganda um, and to then uh, create uh, a response to that propaganda. So. You know, here we have the, the possibility of uh, a Aurelian uh, ministry of truth, if you will, uh, which means that, you know, uh, this notion of fake news uh, becomes something that can be used as a basis to begin to uh, attack alternative social media, uh, alternative press, um, and label them as uh, the pr uh, purveyors of fake news. Uh, and well could, said. in fact, lead to them being shut down. So I think this is what she's referring to, a very, very uh, ominous move that was made uh, late Friday evening, December 23rd. Uh, and so, you know, one, one thing about this, Jill, we have to, you know, remind people of, and while we all concerned about, uh, about Trump and, 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 and neo-fascism, if Trump is able to, in fact, um, uh, initiate uh, more intensive neo-fascist policies. We need to be, be reminded that the, the infrastructure, the foundation of neo-fascism has been laid by the Democrats and specifically by this last Democrat, uh, Barack Ob uh, Hussein, uh, uh, you know, Obama. And so if this, I is, can this is the foundation we have to be, have to, we have to uh, you know, remind ourselves and people of. Exactly. Well said. Thank you. Um, another question, and maybe we'll try to do a lightning round here and get to yeah. as many questions as we can. Uh, are we still bringing a voice uh, to those at Standing Rock? If so, how and how can we help? Um, 
And I'll, I'll take this one just to say very quickly, you know, we uh, try consistently to lift up the voice at Standing Rock and to point to the fact that Standing Rock is a fight for us all. It's a fight for democracy. It's a fight against police violence. It's a fight for uh, indigenous sovereignty, for human rights, for our water and for our climate. These are critical for all of us. And again, tune in on, um, on the 21st of January when we will be doing a uh, live stream with some voices from Standing Rock. So um, stay tuned, also stay tuned to the Green News Network where we will continue to lift up the voices of Standing Rock. Uh, here's one for you, Ajamu, from Jack Plasterer. How did this election shift the public's view of third parties overall? And just a quick lightning round response. I think that people became more aware of the reality that there are third and fourth parties out there. Uh, so I think that the foundation has been laid for uh, future successes uh, for this party and perhaps other parties. So I think that we have I'm, what a positive in the work that we did over the last few months. Thank you. Um, next question. Um, Nick Harper says, what, what do you consider the biggest accomplishment of the 2016 campaign? And I'll just say in a sentence, you know, I think the biggest accomplishment was um, sort of breaking through the media silence and the media whiteout to let people know that there is an option there. And there's a big politics of fear out there, like Ajamu said, but part of our struggle going forward is to ensure that we have a right to vote, we end the voter suppression, we have a right to know who we can vote for, and we have a, that, and that means opening up our debates. So we have a People's Debate Commission, and stay tuned for more information on that. And we have a right to vote without fear. And that means moving forward with ranked choice voting, which lets you rank your choices. So you don't have to vote for the lesser evil. You can vote for your real choice your values choice, knowing that if your first choice loses, your vote is automatically reassigned to your second choice. Here's a question from John Chrisman. Will Jill and Ajamu be rallying for various state and local level Green Party candidates in 2018? Do you want to speak to that, Ajamu? I'll speak to that very briefly, of course. I mean, you know, uh, my commitment to, to this um, campaign extends beyond the campaign itself and extends to the, the Green Party as a independent apparatus, which means that we have to become effective. So we have to run um, candidates at every level of government. So to, to the extent possible uh, where I can provide support uh, to progressive candidates, uh, I'm definitely committed to, in fact, uh, doing that. Thank you, and I really look forward to doing that with you. I think that's half the purpose of our campaign was to lift up those candidates in 2016, but also then to use the, whatever momentum we have built to continue to support the movement building and the building of a political uh, traction uh, in the form of supporting our candidates at all levels, up and down the political spectrum. Uh, next question, what was accomplished by the recount and what was the real issue or problem in that you found in recounting the votes? And I'll just say, um, I think the recount helped to shine a light on the fact that we do not have a voting system we can trust. And that was the question asked by the recount. It wasn't an effort to help one candidate or hurt the other, but rather to look at the states that had the biggest indicators of, of problems in those states. So in Michigan, for example, where there were 75,000 votes that were blank, uh, which was about seven times the number of the margin of difference in that state. And what we found was that there was just, uh, there were enormous problems. There was uh, a, an effective Jim Crow in our elections. And that was probably the biggest take home, I think, was that you had not only uh, voter suppression before people came to the polls and then being prevented from voting, but even for people who were able to vote, you had systematic failure and preferential failure of voting machines, of the counting machines, um, 
uh, due to the poor maintenance of the equipment in resource poor communities. So in other words, injustice continues to flow downhill, continuing in our voting system. And coming out of this, we have really a, uh, a movement for voting justice that works to bring us together. Because right now, voting justice is kind of um, uh, divided and conquered. We need to stand up for the rights of felons to vote. Uh, who've had their voting rights taken away from them. We need to stand up to end voter suppression and voter ID laws. Uh, we need to stand up to ensure that all votes are counted, uh, including in communities of color, that every vote counts and every vote is counted. And we need to ensure that we can vote without fear and vote without, um, uh, you know, with full knowledge of who it is that we can vote for, why we need open debates and why we need ranked choice voting. So we're continuing to work on that. And the recount was an effort to really break through the media silence. It's effort to um, white us out after the election when everybody was looking for uh, where do we go from here? So it was a way to break through and a way to focus uh, on justice and racial justice in particular. So, um, Someone asked, Joey Wubin asks, Occupy DC or Occupy Inauguration, is it happening? Do you want to comment about that, Ajamu? Well, I'm, I will just very briefly say that, uh, of course, there, there are many plans to um, have people to show up to express their opposition to uh, the incoming administration. Uh, I think that's a good thing. Uh, but again, we want to remind people that while these kinds of mobilizations are important, uh, in order for us to be effective and to be an effective opposition, we've got to commit ourselves to organization. So strengthening the Green Party apparatus, uh, building uh, organizations, connecting those organizations to uh, the Green Party apparatus uh, is vitally important. And going beyond just the mobilizations uh, and getting oneself into an organization and being an activist is something that we really have to uh, consider uh, during this, this next period. Well said. Um, Joshua Lacey Baldwin says, I'm new to the Green Party and its values and seeing uh, as the next presidential election will happen when I'm in college, what will your party do to tackle student, the student loan problem that most students face? So I'll answer that quickly just to say that uh, the Democrats and Republicans bailed out the crooks on Wall Street who crashed the economy through their waste, fraud, and abuse. What we in the Green Party call for is bailing out the victims of Wall Street, uh, starting with the young people who are trapped in student loan debt. So we can bail out uh, young people in debt. We can come up with that $1.3 trillion. We came up with much more to bail out uh, Wall Street when they needed it. And we also call for free public higher education. It pays for itself seven to one. For every dollar we put in as taxpayers, we get back $7 in improved revenues and public benefits. Um, here's one from Kel Mendez Medina. What is your stance on the debt in Puerto Rico? I think that what we see in Puerto Rico is, is basically a crime. You know, here we have Puerto Rico that is under the effective occupation of the U.S. Um, government, uh, denied its independence, um, and on top of that, constrained in terms of its ability to address its own material needs. And so what we have is a consequence of the inability of the authorities there in Puerto Rico to address the, the material realities uh, that they face. Uh, now we have a extreme form of neoliberal neoliberalism being imposed on the island, a sub minimum wage, uh, constraints against uh, their civil liberties. Uh, I mean, it is really shameful what is happening on that island, and it just again affirms the 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 reason why we need to have a movement uh, or support the movement for real Puerto Rican uh, independence. Thank you, Ajamu. Manny Abreu says, uh, any words for those blaming the Green Party for Hillary's loss? So I'll just say very quickly that uh, Greens would not have voted for Hillary uh, if we did not have a Green candidate. Uh, over 60% of Greens would not have voted if they didn't have a Green to vote for. 
And if you look at those Greens who would have voted without a Green candidate, over one third of those Greens would have voted for Donald Trump. So when you actually run the numbers, uh, the benefit to Hillary Clinton of wiping out our, our campaign would not have made a difference in any state. Uh, but let me say the bigger issue here is this question, is the solution to a uh, democracy on life support to silence political opposition? No, that doesn't solve the problem. It only makes it worse. Uh, democracy depends on a vibrant political opposition. So the answer to scary candidates that you may not like is not to silence everybody except the second worst candidate, rather is to change the voting system so that we have ranked choice voting so that you can actually vote your values, not your fears, and create the future we need. Democracy is not a question of who do we hate the most. We see exactly you know, what we got in this election, which is that the politics of fear has delivered everything we've been afraid of. And that's been going on now uh, for election after election. So we need to be able to start standing up and leading the way with our values, with our actions, and with our organizing. Um, Margaret Kimberly. You know, you know, Jill, I'm going to tell you, you know, mm -hmm. I was just going to say, you know, I, I'm, I'm one that does not shy away from that notion of, of a spoil. We we are in this in this struggle to build a party to advance uh, our interests to represent the people who uh, put if we impact uh, an election. Then so be it, you know. So and we need to put that out because we know we're going to have pressure on the Green Party in twenty twenty. Uh, that we have to draw a line in the sand and build an effective option. And if whatever that means in terms of, of short-term politics, so be it. And, you know, I think people like you and me, um, that's why we ran. We ran because we think our survival depends on uh, justice and on building a movement for justice. And if we're going to do that, we have to struggle and we have to fight uh, politically that exactly. the solution for a toxic <clears throat> democracy is not to silence political opposition. Um, and, you know, I think that's why people like you and me stand up and we fight no matter what. There are others who don't quite get that. And, you know, I hope that they do. But if they don't, you know, I think ranked choice voting is how we move forward in a way that lets everybody move ahead, even if they haven't learned yet these lessons about what it means to really struggle and to stand up and to uh, really move forward with a politics of courage, not with a politics of fear. Um, Margaret Kimberly says, Democrats are terrified because their plan for international hegemony is falling apart. That's why Obama signed his Christmas Eve NDAA fascist legislation. Very dangerous. Thank you, Margaret. Well said. Gigi, um, Gigi Schomburg says, um, you are both brilliant. Thank you, Gigi. We need all splinter groups to band together. Unity. Well said, beautifully. Um, uh, Jeremy Connor says, we in Michigan, thank you for forcing people to recognize the archaic voting mechanisms that are still in place. And thank you for forcing change. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, Tynan Gilliam says, global change is needed for sustainability to combat climate change. Well said. And one thing, uh, Forrest Belvin says, one thing I learned in this election is that Ajamu Baraka is the real deal. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, Forrest and Kathy Chadwell says, I'm thrilled to be liberated because I too, I am too left to be a Democrat anymore. Love the Green Party. <laughs> too left, too humanist, too awake. Um, all kinds of reasons people are leaving the political establishment, the Democrats and the Republicans. And I think um, we have just a minute or two to sign off, and I'll just say briefly that uh, it's been such an honor to 
uh, to run with you, Ajamu, and to stand up with you for uh, so many of the communities that are in struggle, so many of the communities that are leading the way forward. And I think facing what we are now with um, neoliberalism unmasked, the sort of logical extension of where the Democrats have gone uh, with the triumph of the Republicans now, I think you know this is a time for political renewal and it's really important for us to stand up with the courage of our convictions, to remember what happened under Richard Nixon, how we stood up for many important things, brought the troops home from Vietnam, got women's right to choose from a very conservative Supreme Court, um, got the uh, Clean Air and Water Act and uh, workers' safety and, and health legislation in the form of OSHA. Uh, also remember that several um, very tyrannical and autocratic presidents have been removed from power recently, basically by people organizing. And on the power of that organizing, getting out into the streets in huge numbers. And that includes the recent president of South Korea, who is now under impeachment for what? For uh, corruption and for involvement in influence peddling. The uh, president of Guatemala, who was likely likewise removed from power uh, because of a corruption and a kickback scandal. And if there's anything that Donald Trump represents from uh, from the get-go, it's an incredibly uh, corrupt um, uh, system, a, a corporate, uh, toxic, capitalist system that's all about influence peddling, all about the power of the few over the many. So I'd say stay tuned. This story has only begun. This is time for us to stand up with the courage of our convictions uh, knowing that, uh, in fact, we do have the power, we have the numbers, and we have, I think, more urgency than ever to stand up and lead the way forward. And with that, let me let you uh, close us out, Ajamu. And uh, again, a big thank you to everyone for tuning in. And thank you, Joe, and thank you, everyone who's been listening to these last 30, 33 minutes. Uh, my very short comment would be uh, to just echo what Joe just said. And for, for us to, to remind ourselves of the power of the people. You know, the theme of our campaign was power to the people. And that's really, uh, really key. When we understand our potential power and understand how that power it can be effective when we are organized and have a vision, then we have nothing that can constrain us from realizing that vision. So I say, uh, green folks, you know, out there, make yourself visible in social movements. Uh, connect up with your local uh, parties, chapters, if you have not. Uh, understand that we are in this for a for the long term. Uh, the kind of radical change that we need and want, it won't come overnight. But if we are patient and systematic uh, and stay committed to our principles and values, then we, in fact, will become the opposition that we know we must become. So thank all of you for your for your attention. Uh, and we are looking forward to seeing all of you and working with you and struggling with you uh, in 2017. Thank you all so much. Thank you, uh, Ajamu. And I look forward to uh, many more conversations to come over the course of the coming year. Thank you all so very much. More to come. Take care. <laughs>